When Cameron was in Egypt's land Let my Cameron go Today's on here. I am back ish. <laughs> Wanted to drop in a note uh, just to say hi to everybody again. Um, and let you know, having some cowboy coffee in a pipe that was gifted to me by Alex Mirzoff good buddy in the YTPC and he is you see him a lot in the comments section and in the chat discussion during lives um, just a real super nice guy uh, very thoughtful uh, just thankful that uh, we got guys like him in the YTPC so anyway wanted to drop in a note talk about june briefly um i had to take some time off uh, from the prayer meeting because june was a very challenging month of study for me and my pastoral duties and that i have in june and november uh, and wanted to rejoice with what went on in it and to convey that message to you because correction, reproof, instruction in righteousness that we can read about in 2 Timothy 3.16 is a good thing. Um, because these are things that the Lord has set in our walk that we are preordained to walk in, as we can read in Ephesians. That they're important for us because we are in sinful flesh and june was a challenge because in our studies at our church we focus on verse by verse bible study and we move very slowly <laughs> we don't necessarily take sections and preach those sections as our verse by verse study goes we there are a lot of times where i cover one verse on any given sunday which is perfectly fine the challenge becomes maintaining context communicating that context consistently um it is a very big challenge uh because we know that we want to rightly divide the word of truth and making sure that we stay consistent in what we know that the Lord is teaching in, in there in the word is of paramount importance. We should be humbled at all times by the word because it is him. <clears throat> and I am so grateful for the elders at our church who are wanting to be able to maintain a consistency, maintain the truth of his word, and instruct as well in that process. We live in a world that is incredibly busy about teaching everybody that they are as long as you are of the right mind anyway that we are perfect the way that we are that we don't need to change anything and that is patently false that there is none who are perfect that we never reach perfection outside of being the Lord's and that life is a constant work in that regard that we never should ever ever come from a position of haughtiness 
where we think that we are absolutely a okay in what we are going about. This especially is for those of us who are involved in teaching the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians 1.21, it says, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. And the word is foolishness to the world. And that's fine with me, because if I'm in disagreement with the world, I actually feel a lot more confident about where I stand in my spiritual walk with the Lord, because that's what's important, is that we are humble. And that even in our flesh, when we are preaching a foolish message, that, that the Lord's in control and that he is the one whom we look to please, not that we look to men to please. And when I was talking earlier about the, the messages that I was preaching, that I was receiving correction from the elders, it wasn't necessarily that I was preaching error. But it was that I was preaching a biblical truth from another passage in lieu of preaching biblical truth in the context of where we were in the Word. That's really important because while we, I can preach a message very easily on the fact that we do not sin in our new creation that the Lord has given us, that that doesn't override messages of responsibility. And I got a little bit off track with that. And the elders wonderfully, in a wonderful fellowshipping, loving discussion, guided me along correct, to a correct message with that. And I want to pass that along because none of us are beyond reproach. None of us are beyond the correction and the instruction and in righteousness. The world wants to sit there and say that, you know, you know if you make a mistake, it's okay, keep going. No. I don't want to. But woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And so what I need is more correction from the word. And that's one of the things that the fellowship that I have with our elders at our church drove me to, was it drove me into the word, drove me into a position of humility in consideration of what I was teaching and did it line up with the context of what was in his word? And it was wonderful. Our desire should be the chastisement. And that sounds so antithetical to what the world is teaching because you know, we don't want to be corrected in the world. We don't want to be, you know, receiving these things that make us uncomfortable. And the reality is, is that we can read about this in Hebrews 13, that while it is not enjoyable in the moment, we understand and know that it yields to us the peaceable fruit of righteousness for those who are trained by it. That's what I want. Our positions as Christians, and I know this isn't for everybody, but that's all right. You all know where I stand with this. 
But our positions as Christians is to desire the reproof, the correction, the instruction in righteousness, and to make sure that we in our walk are in the right mind with where the Lord has us. It's a wonderful thing. And I literally, <laughs> mentally, not emotionally, felt the growth and that yielding of that fruit. And it was so wonderful. I rejoice in our elders. I rejoice in the Lord. And as a result of my own personal lesson in that, I would counsel us all in our daily interactions out there in the world and in our own beliefs to do just like the Bereans in Acts 17 and compare everything with Scripture to see whether or not they're so. Instruction is a wonderful thing. And it may not be, in the moment, fun and enjoyable, but the growth that we have as a result. Oh, brothers and sisters, it's flat-out amazing. And it's stuff and it's growth that we take beyond us in this world. We take it with us when the Lord calls us home to glory. The fruit of righteousness is where it's to be. So, anyway, just wanted to put that out there. Put your thoughts in the comments. would love to hear these. Uh, let's fellowship together. Look forward to resuming the prayer meetings on the 11th. And have a safe and happy 4th of July as we celebrate the blessing that we've been given in this country. Pray that the Lord keep it, but understand that if not, it's still the Lord's will. And that he's going to still, in all that goes on, work in us both the will and the do of his good pleasure. So, love you all. I look forward to seeing you and fellowshipping with you all again. Grace and peace to you.